Well, we're here today in the shop and, uh, you know, we're going to do a special thing for you today. We're actually going to show you how we're going to go about planking the top sides of this boat. We're going to give you a little inkling of it. It's not going to be maybe some of the more complicated areas where we have to put more bevel on it. In this area right here, there's very little bevel whatsoever. It's almost 90 degrees. So it just, it's easier for us to demonstrate that. And, uh, you know, obviously as we go up, get going up, it's going to be going around a curve and the generating of bevels will be necessary. So, you know, uh, you know, what we're going to do is show you how we go about it. We're at the magic line. This is the magic line right here. So we're putting one plank above the magic line. This is the first plank above the magic line. And uh, we've got a couple on back aft. And uh, now we're going to show you how it's done up forward here. Now, one of the things I have to say about this system is that uh, it's always seemed to me as if it was like a really simple, simple thing to do. But, you know, there's some complications involved in it. And uh, there's nothing hard to do or anything like that. It's just a little tiniest bit complicated. And once you get onto it, it's like the simplest thing in the world. So, you know, we're going to use one pattern, one pattern. And this is the pattern right here. And every plank is going to be cut off that pattern. It's not going to be traced off of it. There's not going to be any lines drawn, right? We're not going to follow any lines. We're not going to do anything like that. We're going to follow a batten. We're going to tack down a batten, and we're going to follow the batten. Now, the first straight cut that we're going to make is going to be on the top edge of the plank. The top edge of the planks, all the planks from here up, will be sewn 90 degrees on the top edge. And then we're going to flip it over will be sawing the bottom edge of the plank, you know, to a progressive bevel in many spots, but not in this spot. This will be 90 degrees, like I said. So it's for demonstration purposes. And uh, we actually haven't put this system into use yet, which is really something else. Yeah, no. We've been talking it's... about it for years. And uh, I've actually done it on another boat, but it was somewhat different. So this is the first time that I know of that a full length pattern has been made for both sides of the boat and uh, we're going to cut the planks for the starboard side over here on this bench and we're going to cut the planks for the port side on the other bench. Now in this direction, on this bench we're going to be cutting in this direction every time. In that bench we're going to be cutting the opposite direction so it's pretty easy to do really. And uh, you know we had to have full length benches but we had to have benches anyhow. and. Uh, you know, now we've come up with this system. I've shown you this before about how we, we call these sky hooks, but you can call them anything you want. They work fantastic. You put a clamp up to it and you can push these clamps right in place. So we've got a series of those in place. And uh, that's going to be pretty impressive in itself. And uh, what we're going to be doing is cutting the plank and putting it up and see whether or not it cooperates with our lines. Now, the lines look quite good, but there's a couple little spots made with a couple little zigzags in them. Very, very little. So what we're going to do is try to correct all that by moving the pattern that we're going to saw on top of the material. Now, this pattern that we've got right here is designed to line up exactly with the edge of the plank like that. So it's even in the back. And then you saw over here. Well, you know, if you wanted to make the plank a tiniest bit bigger, well, you just move the uh, thing over here before you tack it down. If you want to make it smaller, you move it over there and tack it down. So in any place, in anywhere on this hull, we can adjust the planks we're on, and we can adjust the way the planks are going on. We can compare the planks as they go on to the lines that are already on the hull which, uh, you know, I, I think that's a good thing. We put the lines on this side, you know, just because we wanted to more so than anything. All we needed was the division marks like this, and that's all we're going to have on the other side. We're not going to have any lines drawn. We're just going to use the division marks. So this side's a little bit more comprehensive as far as how we're going about it than the other side, but uh, you'll find that they both work good. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to straighten one edge of this plank. And that will be the top edge of our plank that we're going to put on. So, you know, it's pretty simple. We're just going to tack a batten along it like so. And we've got this little space. So this shows you how far the uh, saw cuts uh, from the edge. So we're just going to place that on there like that. And uh, I'm going to tack it down in place. Just lightly like that so it doesn't move around. 
Now, Ken's going to sight it for straight, and I'm going to put a nail down here in the middle. What do you think, Ken? Looks pretty good to me, Lou. Now, there's something I want to say about this. Okay, our batten was cut nice and straight. It is nice and straight. We've been using it for years to cut planks and do all kinds of different things with, and uh, it's just been great to us. That's part of the mast for Matthew Kabrilowitz's friendship sloop, that piece of wood yeah, right there. I believe that was. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. So that's a fair batten, but it's not stiff enough to be straight. You know, it moves like this. It's nailed down on both ends, but it moves like this. So we're just going to put it in neutral, and that's pretty much straight. But if we were trying to squeeze material out of a plank or something like that, you know, or try to get two planks out of something, you know, we might have occasion to want to spring that bat and then nail it down like that and still call that straight. Exactly. Because straight and fair are actually two different things, but, you know, it would be a fair curve, not straight. It would be a fair curve. We could use that curve up there. We don't have to cut it perfectly straight. We could cut these planks to a sweep because when you get over here with them, they're edge settable. You know, they're not, we didn't put them on so wide that we can't edge set them. We'd just be in all kinds of trouble. You, you, you just don't want to do that. There's mistakes that you can make planking, and most of it starts at the very beginning. So we've planned it out. We've come up with this system to save ourselves a lot of work. And uh, I have to say that this system that we're using right here is very similar to patterning a plank and cutting them out the way we cut them out, you know, upside down and different things like that. The first cut, the plank is right side up. This is the outside of the plank. But once we cut the top, we're going to flip it. We're going to be cutting the bevel on the bottom of the plank by uh, adding the bevel. Uh, it, the, the saw will actually add the bevel to the plank from the measured spot. So, you know, uh, we'll go into that when we get involved with bevels. Now, uh, so we, Ken says that's looking pretty good right about there. Yes, no? Yes, it's good. All right, then. And we're just going to tack it down right there. We'll just put a couple tacks in between so it doesn't move around on us when we're sawing. And one right here. And this will be it. All right. Is that enough, Lou? Yeah, that's plenty, I All think. All right. It's pretty easy to do. We have this laid down on the bench, and I think once before I've said that this little batten on the side of the bench right here is to keep the saw on the right angle or tipped up so it's parallel to the face of this plank. So, you know, it's just sitting there, but we did fasten it down. It wouldn't matter because when you go along here with the saw, it's just going to go down automatically. You know, it, it's so small and, and uh, limber that when we saw, this piece would just lay down. Now, this piece is another story. You can have all kinds of different problems or different situations with a piece like this because this piece right here is, is cupped a little bit like this. Right? And when we put it through the planer, it doesn't necessarily come out flat. The planer might squeeze some of the cup out, so when it comes out the other side, it's still cupped. Still right? cupped. So, you know, we know it's cupped, and, uh, you know, it's, it's not a problem for us at all. We had come up with a system, I think, uh, one of those uh, dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had come up with a system on the bench of drilling holes and putting... Uh, what they call hold downs in the holes. But when you use a wider plank like this, they're kind of in the way, and we're trying to hold this side down over here. We can't do this because what would happen, the sword come bang into them. So, you know, I don't know. Necessity seems to be the mother of invention. And uh, <laughs> when we got faced with it, Ken came up with the idea, the same idea that we were using in order to squeeze the planks up tight, you know, with this clamps, these bar clamps pushing, we're doing the same thing right here. We put the clamp on the batten like that, you slide it up there like that, and there you go. Just like that. Now that is down nice and tight. So these two uh, are exactly the same height, so we don't have any trouble with the saw, you know, rocking back and forth as we saw. It just, it just happens. Let's put another one here and one down the end. That's all we need. And you make sure this one stays tight when I, Is this good? And we're going to put one here. 
Now this is pretty simple stuff right here, but believe me, without it, you could have a few problems. The alternative to this would be that when I saw this plank out, Ken would have to stay in front of me holding it down nice and tight and stuff like that when, you know, it just isn't the thing to do. This, this sets it up one end to the other, pick the saw up and cut. There we go. Now I want to show you some things about this saw. People have been asking me about this saw for years and years and uh, you know, it, it's something that I believe I designed and the concept of it and how it works and stuff like that, I believe I designed it. And uh, you know, there's been people made them since and uh, maybe they've on to exactly what I was doing and maybe not. This particular saw right here is an old Milwaukee and the reason why I use it is because it has what they call a trunnion on it right here in front. The tilting pivot is not a pivot above the deck like a rivet right here and one in the back that it pivots on and the reason why is because when you change the angle of the saw the blade doesn't maintain the same distance from the fence where it cuts. So you can't use a saw for this purpose with a pivot above the deck. It has to have a trunnion. There's very few saws that had a trunnion. The old, old Rockwells, were there, there were Rockwells, right? Yeah, Rockwells. Yeah, the Rockwells. Yeah. They had a trunnion like this, a single one on the front, and you could have done it with one of them. I never have. I have a Royobi saw that's got the same sort of a thing. It's an old, old Royobi, another one that can be used. And today, they have the track saws. Now, the track saws are going to turn you in front and back. If one would be built, or if I were to build one today, I'd be building it out of a track saw, you know, and uh, it, it, it would just work great. So there's a number of things I've done to this saw to make it work. In the first place, I've put this adjustment on it right here. It's a screw mechanism that you can wind it like this, and it changes the bevel. So that's, that's from zero to one and backwards the other direction, that's back to zero. So, you know, any amount of bevel you want up to maybe eight or nine degrees, somewhere in there, and then the blade starts touching the top of the fence. The saw doesn't need to cut bevels past that. It's got a degree readout right here, so you can see it from the top when you change the degree. You know, a lot of other things have been done to it. I shortened the bed on this side so that it doesn't cut like an inch and a half from the blade. It cuts a half an inch from the blade. That just allows it to do, be more flexible in, in the way you operate it. And a uh, number of other things. When I first used to operate it, it was awful squishy this way because the bolt that held it together was way down here, you see. So I didn't need it down there. I moved it up here, and that took all the squishiness out of it. And believe me, this tool right here, as crude as it may seem, it doesn't need any improvement whatsoever. The thing has planked up, I can't tell you how many boats. I remember the first day that I built it, it had a lever action thing on it. And, uh, you know, I was working on a boat at the Roundhouse Shipyard in Jamestown, and uh, I don't know, I was just obsessed with cutting plank, and so I, so I started coming up with this idea, and, and I built the first one right there. And I'll never forget standing there with the saw, wondering, what am I going to do with it? I need a planking job. And a man came up in front of me, and he asked me if I was Louie. I said, yes. He said, my name's Tony McKissick. I own a 71-foot Trumpy Power Yacht. I want you to put a new bottom, double plank bottom on it. And I couldn't believe it. I was only done with the saw for five minutes, and I had a use for it. So I've been using it ever since, and it's planked. Two, a 71-foot Trumpy, a 61-footer, a 105-footer, and a number of other boats. And it's never had new brushes. It's never had anything fail on it whatsoever in all those years from the 80s till up until now. Well, let's go on and show you a few more things here. Uh, I moved the trigger way back. So when your hand's in the back, you can, you can pull the trigger easier than you can if it was up here. You know, so this puts your hand in an odd position. So I've moved the trigger. You know, I've changed the, uh, the, um, the um, protector here. Just, just about everything's been done to it. So we're going to keep using it, and we're going to show you more about it later. But right now, I'm going to put it away, and we're going to take this batten off and um, flip it over. So this is about how easy that is. There you go. No, 
Now that cut was, like I said, the top edge of the plank that's going to be put on next. So what we're going to do is flip it over like that. Now that will be the top edge. I'm going to make a cut somewhere in here. We're coordinating the pattern to the plank as far as length goes. And, uh, you know, we're starting everything at station number eight. And uh, we put a nail in it right here at station number eight. So any of these measurements that we want, the full length of the plank or where we're going to start on the pattern from the scarf, or in, in any position, we're going to take it all from station number eight. It just means that you have to stretch out half the tape. So from station eight to where we want to start was 45 and a half inches, and we slid it into that position. And uh, it's pretty simple at this point. We're just going to nail it down, just tack it down just so it doesn't slide around. And it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, nailed down there hard. We're going to even the edge up on the outside right here and tack it down. And uh, Ken's going to do the same thing. We've got nails right here, Ken. That's cool. I got a, I got a, uh, I got a ball peen hammer. I don't know why I can't seem to, I can't seem to get it. Okay, we're gonna even it up right here. Oh man, oh man, this thing is. Careful. Mm -hmm. You might not want to try to drive it through the epoxy in the scarf loop. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. And one more. And what we'll do is we'll put the hole down between the nails. How's that? Oh, that sounds good. You know? Yeah, because then we need it. <laughs> Shit, I can't even drive a nail. I have to stick another one in there. <laughs> oh, well, that's hard. The nails, if they're bent already, they're tough in that plywood. Yeah. I guess I'll have to buy new nails. Look at that, huh? yeah. Yeah. They'll get heavier nails. Try that one. Whoop. Try this one. Well, here we are at the bench again, and we've got our pattern fastened down on top of the plank. Uh, we've actually just clamped it on there with some very small clamps, and uh, we don't need them too close together because it's got a rigidity in it between these clamps. It doesn't just move around, you know, uh, very easily. Uh, it seems to me I could put one more right here, uh, maybe just an overhead one. But, yeah, the, the pattern is on there. We even this other side up, and all we have to do is take and pick up our saw and cut it. Now, it's going to be cut 90 degrees, like I said, because that's the requirements of the plank. As we go on, we'll be cutting progressive bevels. But this is how the pattern itself works and how the bench and all these things work. So I'm going to make a cut. We're going to pick the plank up and put it in place. I'm going to take a machinist scribe and scribe the very end of it where it fits up against the stem. Take it down and cut it fit it a little bit, and then we'll mark out where the scarf goes and see how it compares to the line that we've got up there. So let's give it a cut. Just enough. Some more just to keep this up on there.
Okay, let's remove the pattern. Now these overhead clamps, man, these are fantastic. I, I'm so glad I came up with this kind of idea because, uh, you know, without it, we'd have been struggling maybe a little bit, but we knew we'd come up with the idea given the amount of time. So we got no nails in it, no? Okay, let me put these overhead just so they're out of our way. And we're going to put our pattern back here. Stand it up, I guess. Will it stay? We'll stay if we do this to it, won't it? Well, we got one of them. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't work because this thing is hanging out. You know, I used to do this on Trumpies, but this was gone. Doesn't work. Can't do it that way. Okay. Yeah. Ken's going to make a quick little pattern of that. I think that little bandsaw is, uh, is cutting. A little hollow there that must be in that plank below. So you know what I do is just run a two by four between those and put a clamp in between it'll set it. Look at it. Yeah. So that's the way you do it. We just got around some of the complications. What did we learn? We learned to push from overhead. <laughs> what did we learn? Well, we learned our correction thing, sort of. We learned a little bit about that. You know, we learned about how to cut the ends. I thought we could cut them. You know, if this was an older boat, this would have been missing, see? Yeah. The plank yeah. could go right no, by. I know, I know, I know what you're talking can't about. can't do it. I so I didn't even think of that. You, so. want to, you want to know what? I don't mind doing it this way at no, all. No, that's fine. Because I like the scarf at the end, you know? And I, that's, and I, that's the way I've been doing it. The other thing that could be done was we could fasten this plank right on and cut the next plank, you know, and the next plank and the next plank, you know? So we could have four or five of them fastened down there and then just pull them all off and, and glue them on. So, you know, there's different ways of going about it, and uh, we're actually discovering some of the methodology as we go. This was an invention that I came up with, this right here, because I had been thinking about it for I don't know how long. How are we going to hold these planks in place? You know, on Freedom, when I planked Freedom, we had enough guys, we just held them up there and put screws in them. You know, and the other thing it was, oh, no, that's not true, because we planked it from the top down and we used posts to push up on the planks to do exactly like this on that same angle, and it worked out good. So this is, a, this is just the reverse of it. We're planking it from the bottom up. This is what we came up with. And then came, Ken came up with the same basic idea here to push down to hold the plank down solid against the bench because it has to be solid against those uh, barrows. This is solid against the barrows. Those are solid against the barrows. That stops the uh, relationship between the plank and the saw from changing as you go. So, you know, this is a setup. It couldn't work any better than this. This finalized it right here, this pushing down from the overhead. This is just great. So we're looking forward to cutting quite a few more planks and uh, stay with us because uh, we're going to be having a good time. Can you get stuck? You can't stand behind me. Why? Not you until we work. You're afraid? No. Okay. All right. So you want me to walk away? Or you want me no, to stand I want next to, stay, to you? Stay close to me. I'll, I'll Ken and I. Ken and I, all right. Yeah. There you go. I like right here. It's Ken and I. He's relaxing. I got this permanent lean. Do you? Yeah, I got a permanent lean this way, right? <laughs> on this side. When I'm on this well, side. You're going to start walking I, around the boat in the other direction. I gotta, no, I just, because then I walk around this way. I know, but. So I don't, I, I it's you only have to lean. stand I back only, up again. You have to walk the other lean, way. I only lean one way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I walk, I walk backwards on this side, and I walk forward on the other side. All right. Yeah, I got a permanent lean. <laughs> you want something to sit on? You want to sit yeah, on? Yeah, I'll, I'll sit on this. Well, it's a little. Yeah, it's a little. You know. You're a little crowded. Yeah, in I'm there. a little crowded. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. All right.